Um, and the first, uh, the first one uh, is about change itself. Change. Change is inevitable, except from a vending machine. It said that the two things that one can be assured of in this life are death and taxes. One, I think, must add to that changes and endings. Change is the rule in life. Change is another one. But we don't like change. We don't. We work hard to get things the way we want them, and then everything changes. It upsets us, it frustrates us, and sometimes it even makes us a little angry. Years ago, I preached a sermon on change at an American Baptist church here in Michigan. In my sermon, I said something stupid. I made this statement. Change, I said. Change is our friend. <laughs> it can be. After all, I pointed out, changes in modern medicine and technology and self-awareness and so on have made our lives richer and fuller. And I also pointed out the change also means that I don't have to be stuck in a rut. I don't have to be stuck in sin and sorrow and despair by faith. God can change my heart, my circumstances, my outlook, and my behavior. Repentance, by definition, means that by faith I can turn away from sin, from temptation, and can turn my heart toward God and receive that grace redemption and forgiveness that only God can bring. And that kind of change is a good thing. So I said change is our friend. After the service, a, a deacon came up to me with a very disturbed spirit and a very red face. And he tapped his forefinger against my chest and he sternly said to me, young man, change is not our friend. Change is our enemy. Later, a Christian enlightened me about the man. I was told that he had been happily married for 40 years and that his wife had just recently died. I learned that he lost a child to a tragic uh, car accident. And in addition to this, he was a small businessman who for many years had owned a, a shoe store that was now losing its business to outfits like Payless and so forth who sold cheap shoes masses. And the man is broken heart. And the man is angry about all the changes that stole his joy and his peace of mind. I've often thought of that man. I've often thought of his pain, his loss, his anger. I think if I could talk to him now, I might say something a little different. I think I try to help direct him toward the peace and the comfort that only God can give. I try to help him find ways to grieve his losses and draw strength from his faith and from God's faithfulness. But I wouldn't tell him that change is our friend. Sometimes things do not change for the better. But sometimes they do. All these years later, I'd be more inclined to say change is inevitable. For that's closer to the truth, I think, than change is our friend. When we are happy, we do not want things to change. When we are unhappy, we want things to change. And whether we are happy or unhappy, one thing is certain. Change is inevitable. I think the problem is that we long for good things in life, don't we? And when we get them, we want them to be permanent. When in truth, <coughs> everything is changing. In our bodies right now, I'm told that cells are dying and new cells are being born. Uh, we grow older by the day. And, uh, uh, you, you just don't do what I do. And don't look in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> but when you do look in the mirror, you notice changes. <laughs> our bodies change. The world changes. Culture changes. Our outlooks change. When I came here 12 years ago, I did not have a cell phone or a personal computer. And now I cannot imagine life without them. When my daughter Stephanie was six years old, I told her she was perfect just the way she was. I said, don't grow anymore. Stay just the way you are. And she said, oh, Dad, you know I can't do that. 
And therein lies the rub. Change is inevitable. It goes without saying that some change is not welcome. We lose loved ones. The poor economy has affected us all so much. Cherished items are lost and break or they lose the meaning for us. And just when you think you've got a handle on technology, something, something new arrives, and then you have to learn and adapt to that too. However, sometimes change is good. Change is wonderful and change is joyous. David, Landon David Stray, looked his parents in the eyes for the first time this week and captured their hearts forever. Reed and Brittany's little family will never be the same now. Sometimes change is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Loved ones graduated this week. We're proud of them. Friends found jobs. This year, every year, through most of our lifetimes, those of us in this room will, thanks to the, the Gail, to Gail Joyner, Bethany is going to be able to award higher education scholarships, minimum minimum $5,000 to uh, people. Some, some, some years we'll be able to give away $20,000 in scholarships. And, and, and most of us in our lifetimes, we'll see that happen every year now. That, uh, change is sometimes very good because we're going to change lives see, with this beautiful scholarship that we've been given to man. Sometimes we welcome change with open arms. But like or not, change is inevitable and we often suffer when we don't want things to change. Is there anything in this world, is there anything in this universe that doesn't change? Yes. Yes, there is. God, you see, is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the bright morning star. That doesn't mean our, our understanding of God doesn't change. Hopefully you don't get stuck with the seemingly petty and inventional God of the Old Testament. Just because Joshua thought God wanted him to go into Canaanite cities and commit genocide doesn't mean that he got it right. It just means that was his understanding of God. It's precisely those sorts of misunderstandings that prompted God to reveal himself more fully to us through Jesus Christ. If you want a more complete understanding of God than what you will find in the Old Testament, you must turn your attention to the New Testament, to the Gospels. You must look at Jesus. We can only know God, you know, through God's self-revelation. God self-discloses. God is beyond our comprehension. God is mysterious. God's mystery is, is incomprehensible. We can only know God because of what God means to us. And our fullest understanding of God, you see, is through Jesus. Jesus even said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. God doesn't change, but our understanding of God does change. If Joshua had known Jesus, he might have joined the elder John in declaring that God is love. God's nature and character have been revealed to us through Jesus. And God doesn't change, but God does reserve the right to change his mind. Think about it. Abraham heard the call of God to sacrifice his son. But God changed his mind and provided a ram instead. David deserved to die for his crimes, but God spared him. So he could write those great psalms that have been a comfort and a joy to people to the generations and to prepare for Solomon's building of the temple so the Jewish people could be a light to the nation. They could turn people's hearts to the one true and living God. God allowed calamities to visit Job, but later God commended Job for his faith and restored to him his family, music, and joy. There would be no point to intercessory prayer if God were not free to act according to his own will. If the Holy Spirit was not free to move, if Jesus were not free to lead us, to lead our hearts and inspire our souls. This one thing I know, for God so loved the world, say it with me, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, 
does not perish, but has everlasting life. Everything about me will change, but God's love for me will never change. I can count on God's love and comfort and peace. So me. you, me, Bethany, we may face many changes, but Christ is a solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand all of the ground.